Hey, it's Simone. I'm here to swatch inks today. I have a seven samples from Roxy. Most of those, I don't think this one is one, but all of these are shimmer inks. I'm swatching Troublemaker, Kawasan Teal, Wearing Ghoul, Suyong Wichi. Okay, this is probably not sp uh, pronounced correctly. Troublemaker Bantayan Turquoise. Troublemaker Autumn in Grey. Troublemaker Copper Patina. Troublemaker Starry Night Blue. And this one is, if I'm not mistaken, Diamine Shimmer Tastic Brandy Dazzle. I just Googled, the, I was able to read. You can actually see the shimmer and it read Diamine Shimmer Tastic Brandy. And so I Googled and there is one that is called Brandy Dazzle. So I think that's it. Um, I'm swatching on Tomoe River Paper, the old Tomoe River Paper 52 GSM. And on Artist Loft Mixed Media Paper that I cut down to Rolodex cards. And I don't know if I'm getting to it, but the idea would be to answer the 17 ink questions that I found through my Discord and the member who brought it to my Discord uh, got it through the Pen Boutique blog. The 17 ink questions were started by Lisa at her blog oliveoctopus.ink. Um, yeah. So that's the plan. Let's see how that is going to work out. I need a paper to put underneath my swatch. Um, I'm using cotton swaps for swatching and my brass dip nib from Kakimori. Oh, wow. A very saturated ink it looks like it's an emerald green in my opinion it's less turquoise than emerald or the emeralds that I have seen the color that I connect with emerald is actually turquoise so the 17 ink question number one is what was your first memorable ink. I think my first memorable inks were three inks that I purchased in bottle form, which were the first colored ink bottles that I purchased. Uh, and those were Diamine Ancient Copper, Sailor Manu Akibi, and what was the other? Rohre and Klingner Altgoldgrün. And I actually have a swatch to show you. I just recently swatched those during my eight pen questions video. What? Okay, this was in the way. And I just really like those colors. This is a olive green, a burnt orange copper brown and this bright magenta with a gold sheen. I think those three are the ones that stood out and made me want to use colored inks. Second question is, what is your favorite ink bottle design? Huh. Um, now, I think my favorite ink bottle design is an ink bottle that is easily accessible and doesn't hold too much ink because as many of us, I am also really enjoying um, inks, but I never get through them. So 30 milliliter bottles are the best amount for me, Kawasan Teal. Are the best amount for me to 
share some samples with friends, plus also have enough to use, swatch, but also make sure that I actually run out at some point. I like the, I, I mean, this is a very heavy application. Oh, ha, I have totally forgotten how I usually do this. Um, but if I'm going for looks, I think the P.W. Ackerman ink bottles are amazingly looking. have not had one in my hands yet. I wish I had one, though. I really like all the ink bottles where there is one of those, you know, indentations or the bottle is designed so that it, at the end, it collects the ink in a in a spot, like for instance, the Lamy ink bottles or the Hiroshizuku ink bottles, so that you can actually almost get all the way to the bottom of the ink bottle without having to use other tools. Yeah, I think those are some of my favorites, but those two are actually 50 milliliter bottles though. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I, what do you think about this ink color? I really like how it, this looks like a chromo shading ink in a saturated way. I would, I definitely want to use this in, in writing. It doesn't look like it makes, we'll see when it's dry. This is not something to go by in terms of can I use does it look like this in a pen? This is just for me to look at and enjoy and admire the ink colors and also compare other inks with each other. That's why I do these. Okay, next color is Weringul Soyong Wiji. I would love to know how to pronounce this. <laughs> like, really. This is a shimmer ink, first one of seven, six. And which bottle is your favorite to use? Uh, ink bottles where the opening is wide enough so that I can easily access it, that don't tip over easily. So the 30 minute milliliter diamine ink bottles, they are quite tippy and I don't feel safe using them without holding onto them with one hand. Um, I think my favorite to use are the Hiroshizuku bottles. And also, I actually really like the 80 milliliter um, diamond bottles because they're really wide at the bottom. And so they don't tip over easily. Look at the shimmer on this Q-tip. Wow. This looks like a dusty... Well, it's not dusty, but it's hazy a hazy purple maybe that's a good description for this color let me see no so i need to write so young which we we so Young and then W I G E J E. It feels like it has quite a good flow. I often have the problem with shimmerings, and especially when they're lighter, that they're dry and easily to clog my pens, but this seems to be okay. And it also comes off e easily off this uh, dip nib. I Here you could see I had quite a bit of trouble to get a broad stroke. Now the question is, of the many purples that are out there, am I willing 
to put up with a shimmer. I have so many ink samples in my sample box that I'm actually not really sure about this. Okay, let's move on to question number three. What's an ink you love or find useful but would not use for everyday writing? <laughs> so the question is, in my opinion, for me, the way that I use ink is a contradiction in itself. Because an ink, in my eye, is useful when I can use it for everyday writing. So if it's not useful... I don't use it in everyday writing. Um, I could, no, I, I would use, um, what was I, platinum carbon black. I would use that in everyday writing. I do use that in everyday writing. So, okay, I guess this one is also not a shimmer ink. That's at least what it looks like to me right now. The ink that I'm using right now is Troublemaker. Bantayan turquoise. Oh, I should have swatched these right above each other so we could easily compare those. Well, didn't happen. It seems again, I don't know if this is true for all Troublemaker inks, but I seem to have, I seem all the Troublemaker inks that I use are rather on the dry side. It doesn't really matter what kind of color I'm getting. Um, so an ink I love that would I, I wouldn't use for everyday writing are all those light purple bluey chromo shaders. I really love how they split up into all the different colors, but um, they're too light in pens for me. So I, I like swatching them and seeing how they fall apart, basically, but I hate using them in pens. So I don't find them useful, but I find them pretty. So Troublemaker. Ban Tayan Turquoise. What is an ink for you, or what would be an, an ink you find useful but wouldn't use in everyday writing? I also actually would uh, uh, categorize all shimmer inks in that. I find them high maintenance most of the time and I am using them because I have samples of them, but when I'm purchasing inks now, I'm much more picky and I don't think I will purchase shimmer inks, any more shimmer inks. I would just use a sample that's enough high maintenance for one color in a sample. Bantayan. Turquoise. This ink looks so much more turquoise on the Tomori River paper than on the um, mixed media paper. And yes, you can see a difference between these two. But to me, this is green and not teal. And if you look up the definition for teal and turquoise, it's actually an interchangeable word and both mean blue-green. So, so you do with that what you want. But yeah, so shimmer inks are definitely not useful in my opinion. <laughs> um, what is the next one? I, I'd love to hear your thoughts on these. And if you have um, answered those somewhere, leave a link in the comments down below and I'd love to figure them out. How do you discover new inks? Well, I definitely have discovered over the past basically year and a half, I have been discovering new inks by getting samples sent 
from various different friends who offered them um, because they enjoy watching my videos and don't want me to run out of ink to swatch. Um, so that's how I got some of them. I see them online. I see them. Often I fall in love with a... This ink is so pretty. What is that? Troublemaker Ottoman Gray. Wow. I like this. This is a really dark... On this paper, it looks almost teal, but it's green leaning. Muddy green with silver shimmer, I believe. Um, I often find, of course, inks when I see them in currently inked videos, which is interesting. I like making these um, ink swatching videos, but I find new inks more likely um, if or inks that I would like to try. Um, I often write them down when I watch currently inked videos because then I see how they perform in pens and that's when they get me. When I watch these videos, Troublemaker, oh, this feels dry. Um, I like watching them just because they're kind of making them and watching them is quite meditative. I like looking at color, but is it E or A gray? But they... But I look at them and I say, oh, wow, nice color, but I don't feel any urge to write them down because I would like to use them in a pen. That happens when I see them in writing samples with most of the time in currently inked videos, actually. Less so on, on Instagram. I really love... I really love seeing the Wearing Ghoul um, advertisements on their inks, like when they introduce new colors, those always look so fascinating. I have not seen an ink that I didn't like when they promoted, but um, often those inks aren't... I have used f f far fewer Wearing Ghoul inks then I have seen and thought I liked them just because I think their inks are super expensive and m many, most of them are shimmer inks, which I'm trying to steer away from. And then a lot of them are very light and illegible colors, but still, I mean, I can look at them and find them pretty, right? But that's, most of the time I discover new inks by through this ink swaps or well they're not swaps in the sense that I'm sending ink I'm sending a thank you note and a sticker Roxy I did send you a thank you note right yes um, <laughs> and if you would like to send me inks please just reach out if you want me to swatch them And through the currently inks. Okay, so I am swatching right now. Wow, I have heard so much about this ink. And absolutely, for sure, this is a beautiful color. Would I use it? I don't know. This is one that I probably will put in my ink down box. And try it at least once. This looks so pretty. Oh my gosh, have you used copper patina? What what are your thoughts? Is it usable in pens or is it just pretty because it's a swatch? Curious, curious. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty. Okay, next question. Do you use inks for anything other than writing? No. <laughs> wow. This is the most extensive answer I can give for this question. 
really um I, I know that people use inks for for drawing and painting i just don't um, i have so many ink samples and i wish i was this artistic and if i didn't have a puppy maybe or if i didn't enjoy doing all of the other things that i'm doing then maybe i would have time to use these inks for uh making art however because I now currently have a five month old when I'm filming this puppy that takes up a lot of time and energy. I even had to par down doing things that I had done prior to the 1st of January, 2024. So I'm only doing the things that bring me a lot of joy not just a little bit a lot of joy and i'm currently just not in the right headspace to to do that and and that's the big part because i have so many ink samples which at the moment they don't stress me out at all um but i know that if i kept them for making art eventually that that would start to stress me out and so i just don't i have watercolors i have various different watercolors that i use if i want to make art or you know acrylics i really like mixed media stuff so if i want to do something like that i have enough paint that i don't have to save these i'd rather just say okay i'm let's let's look at these i'm not going to use these three inks in pens i i'm not i, I enjoyed the swatching experience let me pass these three along to someone else instead of oh maybe i want to make art with these three so let me put them aside i'd just rather pass them along to someone else and I really enjoy doing that, even though that is also taking up a lot of time to send out samples to people. Random strangers from the internet. I can't believe that all of those inks that I'm, I have put together in these bags of seven, they somehow have a color theme. I don't know if you notice. This fits really nicely together. So, no, I don't use inks for anything other than writing. Question number six. What's an ink that's worth hoarding, whether you actually do or not? No ink is worth hoarding. <laughs> wow. Wow. I'm, I have determined answers. Yes. So, my reasoning for this is there are so many inks being released basically daily that yeah maybe in the chromatography maybe the way it looks it's not exactly the same mix of ink but you can probably almost certainly find a dupe for every ink that is out there there's just so many there's so only so many colors in this world and you know so i don't think any ink is worth hoarding that's why i'm actually giving away every single sample that i'm using so either i swatch them and i say i don't want to try them i don't want to try this anymore no that's not right as i just said if I'm interested in putting these three into pens and I'm not interested in putting this into a pen, then I'm giving away these three samples. Once I have put these inks into pens, even if there is something left of the sample and I might want to use it again another time, I am still passing it along. And my reason for that is exactly what I just said. None of these inks are worth hoarding and with if i want to even try all of the ink samples that i currently have in my stash it will take me a long time 
and the probability that I get back to the same ink sample that I have tried is very low. Um, and that's for me, that's a house made problem. That's a problem that I did for my, made for myself because I started to collect so many samples. Um, but I'd rather have this many samples and pass them along very freely. This totally looks like a starry night. Oh, wow. This is super pretty as well. Unfortunately, all of those are so shimmer inks i i wish i mean okay i know that you wouldn't see stars gold shimmer stars if there was no shimmer in there but i think this color would be pretty even without the shimmer look at this oh my gosh um so yeah so no ink is worth hoarding in my opinion even one that is discontinued and amazing and writes well I just, even with the ink bottles that I have that are not limited and not discontinued, how often, I'm, I'm looking at this from my point of view, from the way that I am inking my pens at the current moment, but how often will I use an ink to make it worth actually being a bottle and how why would I even keep more than just one bottle just because it might be discontinued there is another ink coming along that's going to look similar there is another ink coming along maybe in a different color but with very similar properties and why wouldn't I want to try that Maybe if at a specific point in my life, I decide that I only need three different colors and I'm very particular about those colors, um, then maybe I might want to make sure that I don't want to run out of those colors. But even then, wouldn't it be cool if like, if you had three colors and you went through those bottles of ink and then you choose different ones? And then let's move on to number seven. The ink that I'm swatching is the last one in this batch. So I got, guess I'm just going to um, com continue answering the 17 questions in my next swatching video. Diamine Shimmer Tastic Brandy Dazzle. This is so fun. This is completely saturated with the color from inside. But where, yeah, you can see it. Where... It was written there is leftover shimmer residue and that's how you can discern the, the name <laughs> that's cool i like that okay last one for today did i read the question no i haven't and i'm going to do that in a second this reminds me of ancient copper I need to figure, find the ancient copper. Nope, not here. I'll grab it and, and see if it looks similar. Nope, I don't need this here anymore. So seventh question, and that's the last one that I'm going to answer. And I think it's going to be very comprehensive talking. How do you choose which ink goes into a pen? Do they have to match? Do you always use the same ink in a particular pen? Um, I choose an, a pen and ink in various different ways. So if I want, but my most important um, criteria for choosing an ink and pen combination is, is this ink a wet ink? Does it need a drier nib because otherwise it's not handle it doesn't perform well it will flood my paper does this pen need a dry ink because the nib is super wet or if i want to use this particular ink that is really dry i would pick a pen with where i know that the ink 
the the nib and feet are quite wet and the flow of the ink is is always really good um so that's how i most most of the time that's how i choose now i need to write diamine shimmertastic <laughs> meritastic brandy but now it dries lighter that's interesting dazzle um do they have to match no um but there's a little caveat so if i have an ink and maybe i have two pens that are similar that could you i could use this ink in both of those pens and maybe it's a pink pen and the ink is pink as well one of them is pink and the other one is maybe blue then i probably would match the ink and pen because i don't have any other criteria on figuring out which pen to use um that's often the case when I'm using my Astrobook nib pens, my Estes. I have currently owned three different colorways. And so often if I have a, an ink that fits more with this pen, then it would probably go in this pen because I can easily swap nibs around and stuff like that. But if I have, I only have this Scribo feel. And if I have an ink that I would like to use in this, then of course I do it. It doesn't matter if the ink is green, pink, black, or matches the pen body. So I try to match the nib and feed with the um well Eigenschaften with the properties of the ink and try to figure out which one would go best with each pen. I think that makes sense. Do you always use the same ink in, an, in a particular pen? No, uh, I don't yet. I'm not sure I will, but I'm also not excluding that because sometimes it feels like that would be some, be awesome right if you don't i'm currently i love exploring i love seeing how a different how an ink performs in, in various different nibs but maybe at one point in my life in my pen journey i decide that i have had enough of that experimentation and i would like to find a, an ink for each pen and if i want to use a specific ink or if I want to use that pen then I exactly know how this performs and how it feels and I just know okay green ink this pen blue ink this pen or oh wow pelican m800 this you know and that would be cool too I don't see myself being there right now but I don't say I'm not saying that I won't be there ever Okay, so these are all the inks that I swatched today. I hope you enjoyed listening to me ramble on about the 17 ink question. Let me quickly. So, um, this wearing wool ink reminds me. Oh, Blue Barrel Tonic is much, much lighter. But I think it re actually reminds me of... Uh, Robert Oster. This is Barossa Gilt. This is a gold shimmer. This is a... Not at all. This is more red. But I was looking for... Actually... Uh, where is it? The Great Owl. Maybe I'm just totally mistaken. Oh yeah, I am. This is a 
also a chromo shading ink so i would like I'm, I'm curious i hope i'll pick this in a an ink uh, down video soon let me check if i find another wearing ghoul ink i think i have there's several similar colors no the great gatsby is not jane eyre is much lighter and more red what's this one Jane Eyre, okay. There is one that is called the Night Colored in Grape. It's also much lighter. Yeah, no, nope, nope. Oh, look at this. Business in the front, party in the back. No, is not even close. This is much more teal. It has also a little bit of red uh, haloing. I am thinking Autumn in Gray is, is really nice. Copper Patina. Did I... S <coughs> yeah, that's why you shouldn't talk and write at the same time. Andorillium Luna Moth Gray. But actually, Queen Alexandra's Bird Wing Butterfly Green is too green. I'm thinking of... Pemnonia. Danuvius. Let me see if I still have that. Oh, I had Pannonia Patina as well, but I don't think it's in here. Okay, well. And then I wanted to check for Diamine. Um, what's the name of that ink? Ancient Copper. But we could also look at Oxblood. Okay. Lighter. This is more yellow. The one that I really like, oh, Autumn Oak. We can look at Autumn Oak. This is more orange. Brandy Snap, Brandy Dazzle. Now this is more red or pink leaning. This is more yellow. And then what was the other one? Oxblood, C-E-H-R-O, okay. Oxblood, oh, is much redder. For sure. I hope this gave you a good impression of what the colors look like. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you soon. Bye!